Miami Dolphins fans got their first real look at what Mike McDaniel is bringing with him to Miami and they should be thrilled about the future, forget for a minute about the running game. Yes, it was bad but over time it should get better. Forget about the missed opportunities by Tua Tagovailoa, that too should clean up after a few more games in the system. What Miami fans have wanted to see out of their offense, is aggressive play, when I say aggressive, I don't mean the physicality of the offensive line or a bruising block by the fullback. By aggressive, I mean cutthroat football, we can talk about the 4th and 7 pass until we are blue in the face. It was brilliant and the only thing that would have made it a horrible call would have been a pick, 6. It wasn't, instead, it was 6, no, what I am talking about came throughout the game but more importantly at the end of the game, for years, maybe even a decade or more. Dolphins fans have endured the atrocious play calling from coordinators that are dictated to them by head coaches who don't have a killer instinct. Mike McDaniel, in his first game showed signs that he is has that quality, consider that the Dolphins were up 20-7 in the fourth quarter. They just recovered a New England fumble with 4.55 left in the game. If history has taught us anything, the Patriots should have gotten the ball back as Miami would run the ball to kill the clock. Not McDaniel. His first play from scrimmage was a 12-yard pass to Jalen Waddell. He followed that with a 1-yard run and then another pass that fell incomplete. On the next play with 3.21 left in the game, Tua hit Chase Edmonds on a sort pass that netted 15 yards. McDaniel called three run plays in a row that took the game to the 2 o'clock minute mark. When play resumed, Tagovailoa again threw instead of draining the clock. Miami only ran three more plays. A run by Mostert that saw any penalty and then two consecutive kneel downs, I can't remember the last time Miami was so aggressive late in a game with a lead that couldn't be overcome. This is the kind of aggressive offensive play calling that I have wanted for years. While other teams will run a score up on the Dolphins. Miami rarely returns the favor when they can but McDaniel seems to be built differently, calling pass plays late in the game could have just been a situational practice to see how Tua would react or it could very well be a sign of what he intends to call as the team's head coach. Whatever it was, I liked it. The Miami Dolphins haven't had a great tight end in a very long time and Mike Gesicki comes close but his time in Miami may not be a long one. Playing on the franchise tag, Mike Gesicki is under contract for the year but NFL tight ends are breaking the bank around the league and after this season, Gesicki will want his payday. He deserves it, he has waited patiently, hasn't complained, and worked to get better, the problem will be his contract. Miami could handle it financially but what is important is how Gasicki is used in the Dolphins' offense. Throughout camp and preseason, Gasicki wasn't used as a receiver all that much. On Sunday, he was targeted only one time and it was a delayed route under linebacker coverage, Gasicki played less than 45% of the game, a far cry from where he was at last year. Was this simply a case of the offensive game plan trying to force mismatches elsewhere or is Gasicki's value to the team dropping lower and lower? We can say that any value he has in fantasy football may be gone but the Dolphins don't care about your fantasy teams. Mike McDaniel has a vision for what his offense is going to be in Mike Gasicki's role and it will be different than it has been in the future, now isn't the time to start worrying about Gasicki. Not yet. He is doing what is asked of him. Miami said they had phone calls about potentially trading him, calls they did not initiate. If we get closer to the NFL trade deadline and Gasicki's usage hasn't changed, we may start to hear some chatter, but not yet. It was one game. Regardless, his role with the team has definitely changed. The Miami Dolphins' defense is still the better of the two sides of the ball in Miami and Josh Boyer was a big reason Miami won on Sunday. The Dolphins entered the game with a few questions that needed answering, on the defensive side of the ball but the biggest question was whether or not Josh Boyer could lead the unit without former head coach Brian Flores. Let's just say that Boyer is no longer in the Flores' shadow. Boyer called a great defense on Sunday and his team executed. As the game wore on, Miami got better defensively. It was as though the heat that wilted and broke down the Patriots only further pushed the Dolphins' defense forward. Boyer used a combination of blitz schemes including the zero blitz and it netted three turnovers on the day. His defense kept the Patriots running game below 90 yards and kept Mac Jones guessing most of the afternoon. Miami got two sacks on Jones Sunday including a strip sack that resulted in a defensive touchdown. 
the Patriots only had two drives that were significant. Their opening drive ended with a Jevon Holland interception off a Xavier Howard breakup in the end zone, and their lone scoring drive that came in the second half. Miami's defense was stifling most of the day and it was clear after the first series that Boyer was ready to show he is more than capable of handling the job without the help of his former head coach. Next up is Baltimore and that will be a significant task for Boyer and the defense. The last time Miami faced Baltimore it was a catalyst to a winning streak that put Miami back in the playoff chase. The blowout victory was set up by a defense that was able to shut down Lamar Jackson. Boyer will need to coach another near-perfect game to beat the Ravens in Baltimore next week. After Sunday, there is a lot more confidence that he can come up with another solid game plan.